ending an incredible season uh, this way is it's just the worst way um, to end it. Um, I give so much credit to High Point. Their defense was the best that we've seen all year. Um, balls that um, we've had drop all year long, shots that we've taken, great shots. Um, they were picking up and then they were getting the transition kill out of it. We've, we struggled all year with teams that set really high and slow because we play such um, a tempo, low, fast offense. Um, that's what we practice against every day. And, you know, maybe that's something that we have to look at in the future. Losses like this really cause you to reflect on how you train and what, you know, what kind of things you want to change or do. Um, but wow. I mean, high point really did a fantastic job on defense. Um, I, I said before they're a scary team because they score a lot of points and don't make many mistakes. If you give them too many points, um, you're going to find yourself in trouble. And, um, you know, at, at critical points, um, maybe we made a mistake um, or maybe they made a great play or whatever it was. It just seems like everything uh, that needed to break for us was always breaking in the other direction. We were constantly fighting uphill. Um, but um, Coach Meek and, and that group, I mean, wow, there's a reason why they were undefeated. I told everybody all week. Um, He's got to be really proud of his group. And I think they have a great chance against Purdue if they're that tenacious on defense and have the ability to score in transition. Um, but, you know, from our end, it's a tough way to end a season. Um, certainly not the way you want to go out, you hope to go out, uh, you expect to go out. Um, but nonetheless, it happened and that's sports and that's, um, that's why the highs are high and the lows are Undescribable. As you reflect, obviously, on this match, what you mentioned their defense. Did you see any sense of nerves from some of your players? What the, the court setting was any bit of a factor? And kind of, or was it just their defense forcing you some of those errors you had? No, court setting was same for everybody, and it was awkward for everybody. Everybody had to deal with the same set of conditions. Um, I don't think uh, that one team handled that better than the other. Uh, you know, I really don't think it was anything like that. The game was played between the antennas and on the Terraflex. And, um, I, you know, I just didn't, I, no, I don't, didn't sense any nerves from us at all. I, you know, I thought we, I thought we did a great job. Um, just a high point was stifling um, in terms of their defense. And, you know, they had a great attitude. Um, I thought we had a great attitude too. We fought, but man, um, they just kept coming at you um, you know, I thought we were able to sneak out that first set. Um, and then, then we had it, we had a chance in the second set and we, we let a few points get away from us and they ran away with it. Um, and then the same thing happened again on the third set where it was like about 18, 18. And then all of a sudden it felt like it got away from us. Um, fourth set, I thought we were able to capitalize. I mean, it almost happened again. Uh, we were up pretty good there in the fourth set, but I thought we buckled down and just got the kill when we needed to. And honestly, in the fifth set, I thought if we just got to the fifth set, we were going to be okay. Um, and, um, you know, we came out, we scored a point, uh, scored another point, had, had a weird play go against us early. Um, and it, it just, it, it was an odd game. Um, we, we didn't give up. We weren't fight, weren't, you know, uh, not fighting. Um, high point kept bringing it the, the same way they did the whole match. They were absolutely undaunting. Um, you know, we didn't make any major mistakes. It was just close all the way through. All the 50-50 calls and breaks kind of went against us. Um, and they executed extremely well. Um, and we just executed well. And um, it, it wasn't good enough to beat them at the level that they were playing at today. What can you share with us about the emotions uh, in the locker room and, and your message to the team? Uh, the emotions in the locker room are high. Um, it is anytime you have a group of winners, um, you have um, a group of people who expect to go out there and put their best performance on the floor 
and then have a result show for it. Um, you know, the disappointment is off the charts. Um, there might be a sense of letting down. I, I know I feel a sense of, you know, letting people down. I'm sure that they do as well. Um, there's a sense of, um, you know, they didn't maybe individually, they didn't play their very best. Um, you know, and there's a, a, a guilt that goes along with that, but that's sports. I mean, sometimes you're not going to play your best. This sport is nasty when it comes to finding a person that's not playing at the top of their game. Um, but there's nothing for us to hang our heads about. I mean, we have to be proud. You know, we made it here. We have to be proud of the season that we had. We have to be proud that we put up a great fight. The, the other team was just a little bit better. I mean, we're going to dissect this point by point, and we're going to find out the, the team was a couple percent better. <laughs> it's not that much. Um, and it's hard to reflect on that in the moment because you haven't had a chance to really grasp to grasp it. And especially for the athletes, it's hard. All they know is they lost, and that's not a good feeling. It's not a feeling that they're used to. Um, but boy, am I proud of them. I, I'm proud of how they fought. I'm proud of how they overcame months, you know, over a year um, to make it here. The only, the only bummer, the only, you know, you think and you, you think about the fact that you, you let, you know, two hours and 40 minutes dictate how you feel about the last 15 months. And that's just not fair, but that's sports. And that's kind of how you feel right now. Now we're going to feel like this tomorrow, probably a little bit less. You know, how are we going to feel about this next week? It's going to go down some more. Um, you know, and in the summer, I think the, that hurt goes away and it turns into action. And, um, you, you know, you make yourself better to try to prevent something uh, like this from happening again by putting yourself in an even better position, tougher position to be beat. But again, all the credit goes to High Point. They were uh, defensively, they were on fire. Um, it didn't matter. Serve receive wise, they were on fire. I mean, we, we lean on our serve and pass game and um, they're serving. Um, they, they had some serving errors, but they didn't have any receiving errors. They were unflappable when it came to serve receive. And um, it'll, it, it, it just didn't allow us to get into the best part of the game where we're really good at. They were dictating the pace of the offense a lot. Um, when we did, we were successful, but they were able to dictate it just a couple percentage points more than what we were. That's what this came down to. That's why this sucks so bad. It, it, it hurts because you, you really lost in overtime on, you know, the last 30 seconds of overtime. That's how you lost it. And, and there's just no way to feel good about that. It's tough. I want to know. I want you to know I'm proud of this team, though. This, this team really, this team really battled and, um, it, it was tough, you know, some that it was seven, eight, eight, seven, seven or something like that, you know, and had another bad break go against us. And yet we still fought out of that. Um, they fought, you know, a lot of teams would fold. A lot of teams might not even have got here. Um, they did. And I'm proud of them for it. So you moving forward here, do you take a step back and, and, and kind of step away and let the emotions down down before you reflect on this match and even the season or do you look at it right away and then of course this is so unique because you have a fall now it's around the corner eric i think you have to otherwise you let every mistake i'll let every mistake i made i mean adjustments i should have made sooner I, um you know we should have done this sooner should have done that so i mean this you look back and it's really easy to nitpick a billion things uh, throughout the course of a match like that. And if you win, you don't nitpick those things. But when you lose, you do. If I go back right now in the emotional state after a tough match and start nitpicking all the things just that I did wrong, just myself, it's going to be hard to climb out of that hole. You know, and I'm sure it's the same way for the athletes because they take this so seriously. Um, so the message to everybody is going to be, let this kind of, get out, you know, let it go away before you make any, um, you know, you assign any value to how you played, you assign any value to what happened. 
um, because you're going to be making a highly emotionally charged evaluation of yourself. And those are never good evaluations. Um, you know, I know that through experience, it's going to be near impossible for me to do. Um, I, there's so many times I feel like if I'd have just went this way, it would have been different. Or if I'd have just went this way, it would have been different. But I'm only one part of a major cog, you know? I mean, if a player does this or a player does that or a coach does this or coaches, there's just so many variables in a sport where there's, what, three, 400 points scored or something like that, I don't know. But there's so many variables. And so if I start nitpicking this now, it's gonna be a tough hole to climb out of. Um, but I do think it's important that if there is an evaluation not only of this match, you know, in a microcosm, but the season as a whole, you know, how did I do as a head coach? Was I good or not? You know, right now, the hypersensitive emotional thing says, no, I sucked. I was bad. You know, how do we do as an offense? How do we do as a defense? How do we do as personnel? What does our personnel need to look like to be better? How do we train them to get better? Um, there, there's just so many things and decisions you have to evaluate and go back. And how do we train? Um, what do we need to do differently? Um, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to talk as, as real as I can, but there, there's just nothing good out of um, that's going to come out of picking apart any of that right now now is not the time to do it and even with all the experience i've had of being in this exact position it still doesn't change how you feel and it doesn't change the impetus to want to beat yourself up over it right now um and i'm sure any competitive athlete feels the same way um that's just that's, that's how sports are. It's, uh, you know, I, I've always said winning is a relief, but losing is among the lowest of lows. Coach, I'll end with this. Fair to say high point, the best team that you face this season, and just does this reaffirm your scheduling philosophy of scheduling tough teams that get you ready for moments yeah, like today? I think, you know, our normal scheduling philosophy of playing – about 75% of the teams in the top 50 in the country. We didn't get to do that this year. Um, it didn't allow us to develop at the high level um, that you want to be at heading into this tournament. Um, we really played a localized schedule because of COVID um, and because of the rules. Um, you know, you look back and that's not an excuse. All that did is that just did, that stopped us from being a more developed team, I think. Um, does it reaffirm that we have the right philosophy that we want to go out and we want to play the best teams and we want to challenge ourselves? Absolutely. Uh, and, and we'll continue to do that. That's going to be the hallmark of this program is that we want to go out and um, we want to play those types of teams. You don't want to run into a 16 and 0 high point and play the very best defensive team in the NCAA tournament um, in a weird setting where you just it's tough to get comfortable. Um, that's that's certainly not the time you want to play them. No, you want to play matches like that earlier on uh, to prepare you uh, to be in this situation. Um, the closest thing I think to this was the Florida State match probably, but other than that, all year long, we didn't have anything that was even close to um, what high point it really gave to us. Um, they're, they're similar to a Tulane in some ways. They're similar uh, to East Carolina in some ways and in, in, in ways they run their system. Um, and both teams gave us a hard time. Um, but I thought, I thought we handled them well. I mean, they hit 200 against us and you know, they hit close to 300 on the year. You know, defensively, we did some good things. Offensively, we struggled a little bit. Um, we just couldn't get the serving game going. Um, you know, that's me. I'm the one that's calling the serve. That's on me. What could I have done differently? I'm going to go back and, and beat myself up over every call. Um, so I, I, I think there's a lot of evaluation and introspection that has to take place. 
and you start with the person in the mirror when you're sitting in this chair.